Hey there, I'm Carolyn Canock from Lake Pond Array Waterkeeper. All of us appreciate and rely on lakes. Lakes provide us with scenic beauty and recreational opportunities, such as hiking, boating, swimming, and fishing. They also provide us with clean drinking water, hydropower, irrigation, and support for our local economies. However, if we're not careful, our actions can negatively impact these same lakes we so heavily rely on. These impacts from humans are called anthropogenic impacts. And while some anthropogenic impacts can present issues that are easily fixed, more often than not, our impacts can present long-lasting and irreversible effects on freshwater ecosystems. It's important to be aware of the effects your actions can have on freshwater ecosystems so that you can prevent them and educate others to do the same. In our next chapter, we're gonna explore three major issues that can be caused by human impacts. Thermal impacts, biological impacts, and the impact of nutrient imbalance. To begin, we're gonna talk about how changes in temperature or thermal impacts affect lake ecosystems and the organisms that live in the water. Most of us have heard about some of the devastating impacts of climate change and global warming. For over 200 years, humans have been burning fossil fuels and releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. The result of these actions have been large-scale changes to our climate and increased temperatures of the Earth's surface, oceans, and atmosphere. Other sources of increased water temperature are dams, increased discharge, and water from sewage treatment plants. Aquatic ecosystems are incredibly sensitive to changes in temperature, especially increased temperatures. Water is able to hold high quantities of heat, which means that lakes and other large bodies of water are absorbing the excess thermal energy in our atmosphere. These increasing temperatures significantly affect small and sensitive organisms, such as zooplankton, macroinvertebrates, and amphibians. Also, many threatened or endangered species, such as bull trout, need cold water to survive and are currently losing their habitat and spawning grounds. Increasing temperatures affect lakes that freeze over in the winter because they are losing their ice coverage earlier in the year. This means that they're exposed to the sun for a longer period of time, increasing the length of summer stratification or layering, and increasing the probability that the bottom of the lake could lose its dissolved oxygen stores before the lake mixes again in the fall. This will affect organisms that regularly dwell in the deeper portions of the lake and can force more fish into shallower habitat, increasing their chance of predation or death. Also, as we learned earlier, warmer water holds less dissolved oxygen than colder water. So as our lakes warm over time, they won't be able to support as many organisms as they could before. So although climate is a much bigger issue than just ourselves, it's still important that we do our part to decrease the impacts of global warming. You can help reduce your carbon emissions, such as by riding your bike or walking instead of driving, shopping small and supporting local farmers, and buying sustainable products. Our next anthropogenic impact is biologically focused. A major threat that I've mentioned earlier are aquatic invasive species, or species that are not native to a specific habitat. Some non-native species can outcompete native species for resources, take over habitat, increase predation, and disrupt the balance within lake ecosystems. When this happens, they are called invasive species. Once an invasive species is introduced, it is extremely difficult to prevent the spread and remove them from the ecosystem. In aquatic ecosystems, it's easy for invasive species to hide in deep waters or go unnoticed until they've taken over an entire area. The best way to protect our lakes from non-native species is awareness and prevention, since it's extremely hard to remove invasive species from a watershed. This is because there are limited solutions available that can effectively remove an invasive species from an ecosystem. One solution is using pesticides and herbicides to try and get rid of the new species. However, these chemicals would also impact the native species living in the water. So to try and reduce the use of chemicals, biological treatments have been used to try and reduce the impact of invasive species. Some biological solutions include hand pulling invasive weeds, fishing bounties for invasive species, biodegradable barriers that prevent the growth of submerged invasive plants, or introducing another organism known to prey on or compete with the invasive species. However, these tactics are often more time intensive 
more expensive, and less effective than the chemicals. So although usually safer for the surrounding environment, it can be hard to fully utilize these solutions due to the larger cost and longer timeline. As I mentioned before, the best way to prevent the spread of invasive species is ultimately awareness and prevention. You can do your part by knowing what invasive species are a threat to your area and to make sure you are not transporting them by cleaning, draining, and drying your boat before leaving the area. Also, you can make sure you aren't carrying any invasive species by washing your boots and fishing gear before traveling to a new water body. Our final anthropogenic impact is nutrient loading, or the addition of excess nutrients to our waterways. Nutrient loading can happen in a variety of different ways and is known to accelerate the aging process of a lake, making an older or eutrophic lake years in advance. Eutrophication is defined as excessive richness in nutrients in a lake or other body of water. So although lakes becoming eutrophic is a natural process, humans are currently accelerating this process and decreasing the amount of younger lake ecosystems used for fishing, swimming, and drinking water. These excess nutrients often come from agricultural areas or lawns and golf courses where fertilizers are heavily used. Fertilizers have high amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus to encourage plant growth in lawns and in crops. However, these nutrients can cause overgrowth of aquatic plants, leading to algae blooms or mats of floating plants. These prevent sunlight penetration and oxygen diffusion, decreasing dissolved oxygen levels in the water. They can also release toxic chemicals that can harm humans and other organisms that swim or drink the water. In addition, they decrease recreational opportunities on the water, such as swimming or boating. Another major source of excess nutrients is stormwater. Stormwater is water that originated as rain or snow and runs through our residential areas. Stormwater often runs into the drains you see along city streets, which eventually lead to nearby lakes and streams. As the rain and melted snow run over our lawns, sidewalks, and streets, it brings with it all the pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, garbage, and other toxins as it flows into our water bodies. Pesticides and herbicides brought in from our gardens and farms can kill zooplankton and phytoplankton, disrupting the base of the trophic system and killing the food source for fish and other aquatic organisms. You can do your part to reduce nutrient loading in lakes and other waterways by planting a rain garden to soak up rain and snowmelt so that it's absorbed into the soil and doesn't run off into the road by washing your car on the lawn so that the water used can help water your lawn and doesn't drain into the stormwater systems, by planting native plants along waterways that help filter sediment and nutrients out from stormwater, by cleaning up after your pets so that their waste doesn't end up in the water, or just help by picking up trash and litter so that it doesn't get washed into our lakes and streams. In conclusion, humans often have a major influence on lake ecosystems, whether through our individual actions common practices, or governmental policies. However, we can still work to protect our watersheds in order to preserve the integrity of our water bodies. Thermal, biological, and nutrient-based impacts are all happening and threatening the health of our water. To preserve our waterways for future generations to enjoy and to ensure clean drinking water, we need to practice safe and healthy actions and advocate for others to do the same. Thanks again for watching, and make sure to tune in to our last chapter of our Lake Ecology video series, where I'll be teaching you how you can do your part to protect our watersheds. See you soon.